Hey there, friends. I have something really exciting to share, and of course, I'm going to come to you with it first. As faithful listeners here to the Inventory Genius Podcast, I am thrilled to let you know that I am releasing my first full-length book, The Inventory Genius, How to Use Your Inventory to Create More Profit and Keep More Cash. Yes, my book, The Inventory Genius. It is ready to release, and I want to invite you to get your own copy. Now, this book is, of course, going to be practical as it shows us and walks us through how to use our inventory to create more profit and keep more cash in our business, but it's also a little entertaining. So in this book, I weave together my journey, my story, and the story of many of my clients as we discovered through the Inventory Genius Method how to create more profit and keep more cash in our businesses, whether it is paying down debt or taking a paycheck for the first time, there is so much to be learned in the Inventory Genius. So I want you to head on over to my website, sierrastockland.com, and grab your copy of the Inventory Genius. You don't want to miss this book. See you soon. Hey friend, welcome to the Inventory Genius Podcast, where we work together here to make you an inventory genius. We talk about profit, we talk about cash flow, and we definitely talk about your paycheck. Because at the end of the day, it's all related to your inventory. Let's go. Hello everyone, welcome to the Inventory Genius Podcast. I'm your host, Sierra, and today again, we get to hang out together and just talk about the what, the why, and the how of inventory as we make our way through the Inventory Genius Method over the next several weeks. So like I mentioned last week, we've been having some great interviews, but I thought it was about time that you and I just hung out together. You know, when you um, <laughs> when you have a lot of company over and, um, and you're excited to have the company and have the relationships flow in and get to meet people and chat with people and you know, have people come and go in your house, but then you get to a point where like, you know what, I'm ready to just have some alone time. I'm ready to just chill out a little bit, um, to just, you know, be comfortable with my own people here in my house and not have traffic flowing in and out. That's what I felt like here on the, on the uh, podcast. I was just ready to hang out with you guys again. It's been a while. Um, and I've loved the interviews that we've been having, hopefully bringing a lot of value to you for your inventory based business, but it was about time to just put on our comfy clothes, sit on the couch, grab a cup of coffee and just hang out. And so that's what we're going to be doing over the next several weeks. So last week we talked about doing the right work. This week we are going to be talking about tissues and tums and what to do when you get stuck in your business. So if you have not purchased your copy yet of the Inventory Genius book, I would love to encourage you to grab it. You can get a copy on Amazon or you can find it at my website, sierrastockland.com, um, where you can get any of the three versions, the printed copy, the ebook, or the audible version. So whatever your learning style, I would love to encourage you to grab a copy and you'll find some of what we're going to be talking about over the next several weeks in the book. Um, but we're going to veer off and have some separate little conversations as well. And that's what we're going to do today. So um, the second chapter in my book is called Tissues and Tums. And really, if you, you think about those words and what they stand for or how they played into my story and how I articulate it in the book, the tissues would be the tears that we have, right? The tears, the struggle, the strain of trying to figure it out. And the Tums, that just was, you know, refers to our stress, our stress load as business owners. So when we're finding ourselves tearful because things are not going the way that we had anticipated, had hoped, or we find ourselves under a lot of stress, more stress than we ever thought we'd end, you know, realize as a small business owner, what do we do? What do we do when we get stuck? So there's a, a paragraph in my book and I'm going to read it and then we're going to talk. What ifs are futile? There's no point in wishing to rewrite the past unless we use those what ifs to create our genius. We must own our mistakes and dig deeper into how to do it better the next time around. So from my perspective, here's what I was thinking about as I was writing through this, this story and, and bringing this, this story and this method to life in my book. What if I had thought about the number at the very bottom and had been truly curious about what it drove, what drove it to increase? 
What if I had looked around my beautiful store and my massive warehouse and thought about my inventory as cash on hangers and cash in boxes? I would have realized that every one of those hanging and sitting dollar bills could grow more cash and deliver even more to that bottom line number? What if I had realized I could control the bottom line growth without multiple locations, a team, and so many liabilities on the balance sheet? Would I have even franchised at all? I talk about my growth through franchising and that decision. So the what ifs, are futile if we don't turn them into what fours. And that's what I wanna talk about today. What do we do when we get stuck? What do we do when we find ourselves crying to sleep, crying over our cup of coffee, or just completely stressing out? There are so many small business owners across the world that have invested their time, their energy, their life, their dreams, their earning potential into this concept and, you know, for some, it might have worked really well for a while. For others, it never quite lifted off, right? It never quite took off the way that they had hoped. So wherever you find yourself, I think every small business owner at some point gets to a place where they are stressed out. They're crying themselves to sleep. They wish they could just get rid of this business. They feel so stuck. What do you do when you feel stuck? Okay. Three things for you today, three bite sized actionable steps. Number one, I want you to ask yourself this question like you would be asking a potential coaching client. So I want you to pretend that you are an inventory coach, that you are a retail coach, that you are a business coach, and you have a client that came to you with the exact same surprise, surprise, the exact same business model as you currently have, the exact same story as you have, the exact same mess, if you will, and they put it all on the table in front of you. They told you everything and they said, hey, I want to hire you to help me. What should I do? I feel stuck. I want you to put yourself in a coach's mindset and I want you to ask that client, who's you, but on the other side of the table, if you could wave your magic wand and everything could be exactly as you wished it to be in your business, what does that look like? Okay, I want you to ask yourself who you are, the business client on the other side of the table. I want you to ask yourself if you could wave your magic wand and everything could fall into place, what would that look like? as a business model, what would that look like in your business today? Because here's the thing about getting stuck. Unfortunately, when we find ourselves stuck, we can't even see the forest from the trees. We are in this massive pit of slime, this quagmire of sinking sand. And we can't even see that the shore's right there, that there's a, a big log we could grab onto and pull ourselves out. We can't see that we have tools at our disposal, that we have team and, and amazing things about our business all around us because we're so frantic as we're trying to claw our way out of in desperation out of this situation that we're in. So if we can wave our magic wand, I ask my clients this a lot. If you could wave your magic wand, what would your business look like? Boom, light bulb goes on and they say, well, you know, I wouldn't be working 24 seven. I would only have an online store. I would close that location over there. That's driving me crazy. I would fire these people that are not showing up for work and that are just causing me stress. I would get rid of these vendors that don't bring any revenue in. They start to list off all of the things. This is what I would like the business to look like. I would love it to be a $500,000 a year business that offers me, uh, you know, an X amount paycheck that um, provides for my family, that gives back to my community in this way. The doors are, I mean, they just start to rattle it off because deep in our subconscious as business owners, we still have that dream. You guys, we still have that dream. It just gets lost amongst the tissues and the tums, the crying and the stress the the uncontrollable fear of what's going to happen when I can't pay my bills. That all clouds what potential we have. And so if we could wave our magic wand, we can suddenly dream in a very quick instant 
and then we can get to work. So number one, if you could wave your magic wand, ask yourself or, you know, the client on the other side of the table, which is you, ask them, what would it look like? Then when you have that vision again, I want you to say to yourself, what do you need to make it happen? This is where you have to go back to the episode from last week where we talk about getting comfortable being uncomfortable because a lot of clients stop here. So while I can get people to wave their magic wand and tell me, here's what I want, Sierra, here's what I want it to look like. Then when we switch gears to, okay, that's great. Let's do it. Like I'll tell clients, let's do it. Let's close the location. Let's sell your business. Let's open another store. Let's get rid of those, you know, team members that don't don't make sense anymore. Let's add a new product, whatever that is. Let's do it, I say. Let's pay off the debt. You know, let's take the paycheck. Let's create a budget and stick with it. I believe in you. I know you can do it. What do you need to get it done? That's where I lose a lot of people because so many business owners do not want to do anything that makes them uncomfortable. But I know you are not one of them because you are here hanging out with me. And I believe that you are willing to do the uncomfortable thing. So you're going to make wave your magic wand. You're going to spell out what you want your business to look like. So you can envision again and getting out of that quicksand. And then you're going to ask yourself, okay, what do I need to do to make it happen? Okay, what do I need to do to make it happen? And how will I get there? Question number three, how will I get there? What do I need to do? So if I want to close that location, I need to start looking for someone to take over my lease. That's going to be uncomfortable. That's not going to be fun. And even though not being able to pay for it is not fun, having to ask people if they'd be interested in taking over the lease is, is you know even less fun, right? So I'm going to avoid it. No, you're not. You're going to get comfortable doing the uncomfortable thing. I know that I need to go back to the drawing board and I have to get rid of all these categories of product that I brought in that have made my business so complex. I know that I need to switch from offering every single person terms to asking for payment up front. There's a lot of things that we can do to fix our, our, our problems pretty quickly, but they're uncomfortable. So you're gonna ask, what do I need to do to get this done? And then how am I going to get there? We're gonna write down those things. We're gonna look at our business as a puzzle that just needs to be solved. It's just a problem that needs to be solved. So what do I want? What do I need? And how am I gonna get there? That's how you pull yourself out of a stuck position in your business. I believe in you. I know you can do it. All right. If you need more help, if you want to connect, please head on over to sierrastockland.com. There's lots of resources there. Um, if you are in the middle of pulling yourself up and out, if you are getting unstuck, I want to hear about it. Please send me an email. Let me know that you listened to this episode and how it was helpful or you know, what other help you might need. I'd love to hear from you. So shoot me an email. Hello at sierrastockland.com. In the meantime, I want you to think about what you want your business to look like. What do you need to make it happen? And how are you going to get there? Write it down and then get comfortable being uncomfortable and start doing the hard work. I know you can do it. I believe in you. All right. I'll see you all next week. Bye for now. Hey friend, thank you so much for tuning in today to the Inventory Genius Podcast. If there's something that you heard today on the podcast episode and you want to dig deeper into becoming an inventory genius yourself, I want to invite you to head on over to my website, sierrastockland.com, where I have multiple ways that you and I can work together on your inventory. I want to help you with your profit, your cash flow, and your paycheck because at the end of the day, it's all related to your inventory. So head on over to the website, connect with me, I'll work with you soon. See you then. Hey friend, thank you for tuning into the Inventory Genius Podcast. All right, so around here, you heard me talking about different ways that we can work together. And that's either through a mastermind or through a VIP day. I wanted to share with you a little bit more about what a VIP day looks like. And it's actually not just a day. We start together working on your business for an entire day, but then that work continues throughout the year because let's be honest, Sometimes we can get all of the information, the tools, the systems, and the processes we need right in front of us, but then actually taking the action and staying accountable to get that action done is where we fall short. So here's what it would look like. 
you and I would sit down literally in your place of business. I come to you. So whether that be your warehouse, your store, or any place that you own that has inventory, we sit down together. We look at your inventory. We look at your team. We look at your systems and processes. I get to know all about your business. We dig through your financials and we come up with a system and a process to create more profitability and peace of mind in your business. Then after I go home back to my house in Nashville, my office in Nashville, we'll continue that conversation meeting monthly to review our plan of action along with your financials to make sure that you stay on track. This is a very tailored program and it works. I have amazing testimonials that have been sent to me by women that I've met with time and time again as I met with them for a VIP day, put a process and a plan in place, and then help them execute it. I want to be that coach for you. So if this is of interest to you, head on over to my website, sierrastockland.com, where you can learn more about booking your VIP day.